How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to the 34th episode of Critically Incorrect. I'm joined here today by Charlie, if you wanted to say hi. Hello. So yeah, sadly, no Justin again this week. He's just been very busy. Lately, we've been recording the podcast on Fridays, and he just happens to be working on those days. So we're going to try to get him in on next week. Um, no guarantees, but hopefully he will be here for next week's episode. Um, but yeah, with that being said, we should have a cool little short episode this week, um, full with some pretty cool, exciting news and sadly some delays as well. Of course, since this is the very beginning of the episode, I want to quickly remind you if you have any questions, topic suggestions, any of the sort, list it either in our comment section down below or click the link to make our way to our Discord server. With that being said, Charlie, what have you been playing for the past week or so? Um, yeah, so I've played a decent chunk of stuff this week. I have been really busy with work, so I've been kind of limited with the amount of time I can play stuff. Um, but I did end up picking up Arcade again um, last week because I watched some gameplay of it and I was really intrigued. So I did pick that up. I've probably played about an hour or two of it. Um, it seems pretty fun. It's a little bit buggy right now. Obviously, it is like early access, but there are some like frame rate issues and stuff on PS5. But overall, the gameplay is really solid. So I'm probably going to dive back into that some more next week um, when I get back from like vacation and stuff that I'm on. Um, aside from that, uh, I have played a bit more VR this week. I did play some Sniper Elite VR again today. I've probably played another sort of two missions of that, and that's really fun. A uh, really polished VR game I'm enjoying quite a bit. Uh, I'm not a massive fan of the Sniper Elite games, but the VR ones grabbed me. Um, like, the actual realism and stuff, once you tone down some of the settings, is really fun. Uh, so I've been enjoying that. I did also reinstall Red Dead Online to try out the new update. Um, I haven't played too much. But I did hop on just to make sure everything was like working because it was crashing quite a bit the other day because uh, it has got like DLSS now. It doesn't work as well as like some of the other games, but it still gives you a, a decent boost in performance on that one. Um, so I've played a bit of that. And then the other main thing is yesterday the big update for um, COD came out. So that includes like stuff in Warzone as well as Cold War. And for me, the main thing was the next like round based map on uh, Zombies. So I was playing a decent chunk of that last night, and then today I, I went and did the Easter egg on my own, uh, which was a lot of fun. Um, I'm really, like, happy with how they've done zombies overall, like, this this game. It's really good. Like, the story's really interesting as well. So I'm just excited for whatever the next map or whatever it's going to be next. Because, um, yeah, I'm really enjoying it so far. All the new changes they added to this one and, like, the new Wonder Weapon and stuff is really fun to use. Um, so definitely if you've got Cold War, go and check that, that out because it's a really cool update. Um, but other than that, that's kind of been it this week, I think. Very, very cool. Uh, I myself haven't played terribly much, literally probably like one of the like, least amount just because I was on vacation last weekend with some friends. Um, I think I played a bit of Dead by Daylight last night and more Valorant. Honestly, I haven't like I haven't played that much at all. I've only played like probably like two hours in total in like the last week or so. I need to change that. I need to like force myself to play more. Um, I've just been doing other things like I've had other interests lately, um, but I need to kind of switch back to gaming for a bit here soon. So yeah, sadly I haven't played terribly much, but hopefully by next week I'll have something played um, and I'll talk about that. But anyways, we have some, quite some cool um, news stories to talk about, but before we get into that, we actually do have some new releases this week. So Zelda Skyward Sword port finally came out, port remastered, whatever you want to call it, Most, mostly a port really. They changed like some of the control schemes. So yeah, that's out on the Switch. I believe it's full price. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in that, go check that out. And then Cold War, as Charlie was kind of hinting at earlier, that finally got its new Season 4 reloaded out. And I believe that came out a few days ago. So yeah, that includes like a new Zombies map and some other additions. So if you're still playing Cold War and interested in that, go check that out as well. And yeah, sadly, as I said earlier, yeah, we did get some delays this week, uh, mainly actually today by Ubisoft. So yeah, sadly, it seems like Ubisoft just can't keep any release dates. Like. Yeah, in the past year, I think, like, every single one of their games has been delayed. Um, yeah, sad to see. I mean, ultimately, it's going to, you know, be a better game, right? But, yeah, the two games that sadly met that fate this week were Rainbow Six Extraction, which saw its delay from uh, September down to January of 2022, and Rider, Riders Republic, which was initially coming out September 2nd, and that's coming out October 28th. So, yeah, Riders Republic, not terribly tat bad of a delay. Like, it's, like, two months, right? Um, Rainbow Six Extraction saw, you know, next year, so that sadly is, you know, completely out of this window um 
Yeah, I mean, I'm in terms of why I think these got delayed, I'm guessing it's just because the games aren't ready yet. Um, especially with like Riders Republic, I'm sure just because that's a very short, you know, delay, they probably just need a few extra weeks. Rainbow Six Extraction, I could see the case that they don't think this game will like sell terribly well, so maybe they want to go to like a dead month, like January. I mean, yeah, I could see it going both ways. So, Charlie, what would you think about both these delays? Yeah, I mean, Rainbow Six Extraction is a big one. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's what like four months, four yeah, or five four months. months. So, like, yeah, like that's a decent size delay which makes me think that maybe the game is not in a great state i mean it wasn't when i played it so who knows um writers republic i i remember seeing a few weeks back tom henderson who is pretty knowledgeable in the industry especially when it comes to like ea and stuff but he was saying when he first heard about writers republic like a year or two ago like they had had some really big issues with the core sort of gameplay of how it's you know kind of like massive multiplayer matches and he was saying how they still as far as he's aware haven't really figured out how the game works yet which is a bit worrying considering how close it is um so i i don't know if the delay has something to do with that obviously it's not too big a delay so hopefully it's not in a terrible state and it is more just polishing out bugs and stuff i mean ubisoft games typically always launch buggy anyway um, but they did say with Riders Republic specifically that they're going to have more info on like the beta and stuff to share soon. So hopefully we get our hands on it soon because I do really want to try that one out. Um, but yeah, Rainbow Six doesn't bother me that much. I didn't think it looked great anyway. So I think if it needs the extra time, it should definitely have it just to make it maybe a bit more of a fleshed out experience. Yeah, for sure. Especially with Rainbow Six. I uh, did know that. Uh, sad to see, but ultimately, you know, it is what it is. I kind of expected it as well. Um, I wouldn't even be surprised if, like, Far Cry, for instance, gets delayed as well. Um, We'll see. Anyways, we sadly saw two more delays as well this week. So the first one came in the form of Resident Evil Reverse. So this was essentially the multiplayer component for Resident Evil Village. Um, It was supposed to come day and date, but then they ended up saying, you know, it's going to come out in summer because it wasn't quite finished yet. Um, Yeah, there was a whole thing with, like, the beta when that initially came out. It was, like, a total mess. Um, Yeah, sadly, that got pushed out to 2022, which is crazy in my opinion. And that's a full, like... I don't know. I was expecting this to come out sometime this summer, and now it's coming out in 2022. It's almost like there's not really a point now. It's like the whole, you know, it's like a pack-in, kind of like one of those multiplayers that really only exists with, like, the game that's shipped with, like, the campaign, right? Like, it's, I guess it's, like, its own little thing, but I don't see people really going to go out and, like, download this on its own, especially if you consider the other Resident Evil multiplayer they literally just launched, like, what, Resi 2 or Resi 3? That one um, didn't do well at all, so... Yeah, this game definitely won't do well in my opinion, I don't think, but hopefully it, it will be good. So, Charlie, did you actually play Reverse when they had that beta? So I, yeah, I, I played the beta. I thought it was interesting, but it just felt so bare bones. Like, there just wasn't anything to it. And as far as I could tell, that was the entire content of the game, aside from maps, like the characters you could play, and like there wasn't, re- there's no progression or anything. So, I, because it was meant to come out this month, the delay was to July, and then obviously they came out the other day and said, hey, we're delaying it to next year, which to me says they kind of made a decision internally of do we release the game as it is? It's kind of working, but there's not much in it. Or do we just delay it and hopefully flesh it out, add more characters, more like maps and modes and maybe like a progression system and that kind of thing, Um, which obviously new content is going to take a long time. So for me, I think that is the the reason for the delay. They probably want to make it a fully fledged multiplayer game that they could sell separately other than just being packed in with Village, which I think is a good shout because what was there was fun. It was just there wasn't enough of it i think it needed a lot more content and a lot more time in the oven so hopefully this will mean it's got plenty of time for them to add a decent chunk of stuff to the game yeah sad to see but yeah i don't know i'm not really looking forward to it too much um i'll definitely probably download it and check it out when it does eventually come out since you know it's i mean free you got it for free hours. right yeah so. <laughs> so i'll probably download it and give it a try but we'll see Anyways, the last delay that happened this week came in the form of Ghostwire Tokyo. I almost forgot this game's coming out because we honestly haven't really heard too much about it. Like, if Bethesda's been, like, hammering us with Deathloop, we haven't heard anything from Ghostwire Tokyo, on the other hand. So, yeah, I believe this was, like, what, initially supposed to come out in, like, October or something for, like, later this year. It was November, right? Or November. Um, yeah, just in the fall time, and that got pushed out to 2022. Yeah, sucks to see. Um, guess I just need more time, right? That's mainly what all these delays are for. Just give it more time in the oven. 
and hopefully that ends up being good. So, do you have any more thoughts on that before we move on? Yeah, I mean, I was looking forward to Ghostwire. It's kind of a shame it got delayed, but at the same time, I feel like it's a good idea to move out of that November time frame. But also, 2022 is just, by the week, it just gets more and more packed, full of games. I mean, there's probably going to be stuff that got delayed to next year that gets delayed again, let's be honest. But I think overall 2022 is going to be a very big year. And uh, I feel like almost every week there's going to be something out that is going to be interesting. Like, there's just so much that keeps getting delayed uh, that there's just going to be so much out. So Yeah, that's true. It is going to... It's at least so far looking like 2022 is going to be packed. Um, Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Anyways, another news, Battlefield 2042. There's a lot of questions on this game as, you know, first uh, officially announced, you know, whether the cross progression would be there and if cross play would coexist. Um, So we finally got some more concrete details this week. Essentially what we're looking at here is there is going to be cross progression between PS5, PC, and Xbox Series X and S. So essentially like all the modern platforms. Um, same thing with crossplay, but sadly that won't work for last gen. So yeah, last gen consoles will be playing with other last gen console users. Um, it makes sense. We already knew that like the maps were going to be a lot bigger on, you know, next gen platforms and, you know, it's going to be kind of like a very tricky solution if you wanted to play with other players. Um, I also think it kind of holds it back. Right. So yeah, it's probably best to keep those player pools and, you know, separate spaces and, you know, cross progression, I think is a first, I could be wrong, but I think it's a first for battlefield, right? So that's yeah, I mean, really crossplay cool. as well. Both of those are, are new to the series. So. so that's awesome. Yeah, for sure. I know for sure I have a lot of people that are going to pick this up on PlayStation. And then I also have like another group of friends that are obviously, you know, more PC centered, right? So it's nice to see that this will be a case where I could probably just pick it up on PC and play with, you know, friends on PlayStation as well. So that looks like it's going to be currently the move for me. What about you? Are you planning on picking this up on PC over console? Yeah, I'll be getting on PC just because Battlefield's one of those games that always is super optimized on PC and utilizes all the new tech. Like, they've already announced it's going to be using, like, DLSS on day one, which I think is a great idea. Um, I'm sh- Like, it's going to obviously be great on consoles, but PC's always been my preferred way to play Battlefield. Uh, annoyingly, I do have a couple friends on Xbox One that mm. will be wanting to get it, but I won't be able to play with them. I was kind of hoping that you'd at least be able to play with them on, like, if they had a mode that has the 64 player size maps um, and you could play with them that way, but it seems like they're going to be running completely different versions of the game. So they won't be compatible, uh, which sucks, but I guess I'll just try and have to convince them to get a series X or something um, just so they can actually play on cross play. Um, but yeah, I've got a couple of mates that have PS fives that will be picking it up. So I'm glad it's got cross play cross progression is also always cool to see like, Having that in Warzone and Cold War and stuff has been great. So having it in Battlefield is a really good idea, especially long term. If that once they have like way more content in the game and potentially other Battlefield games that can all kind of play together and stuff, I think it's a a good move long term. I did see some people saying like the player base is probably going to be like small for next gen, but I don't think people understand how big the PC like say, player base probably is. The opposite. <laughs> Like, yeah, like, as well with next gen, like, there's still, like, 10 million, like, PS5s that they've sold at this point, right? It's It's got to be close to that number already. So, like, there's still going to be tons of players, even if only a fraction of PS5 owners get Battlefield. Like, that's still a ton of players on day one. Plus, with, like, the confirmation of how, like, bots are going to work, you're never going to be in a game that's going to have, like, less than 128 players, which is great um so yeah overall like i'm really looking forward to battlefield obviously we only have like less than a week at this point till we see a ton more and hopefully get news on the first like tech test which they did delay to later in the summer um but yeah i'm look really looking forward to it and there's just another cool thing they've announced for it so yeah totally so it's like we're like in those tricky years right where like the transition period of like last gen consoles to current it's kind of weird um yeah especially like given the like we talked about this before on the podcast, but given that the architecture is like so similar, like it, like people clown on them for staying on PS4, and I don't like that too because it does hold back in a way, but it also makes a lot of sense given how easy it is to just you know port over. Um, it's not like a situation where you're looking at like a PS3 with like the cell architecture versus you know the X84 for the PS4. So yeah, good to see that you know they are in fact you know gonna be keeping it separate, but yeah. 
and does, you know, ultimately come with, you know, some, sadly, some setbacks there. Anyways, in terms of EA as well, they also announced that for their EA Play coming up here shortly, that there are going to be no Star Wars announcements. I believe we talked about this a few weeks back, how they announced that it was going to be like a 40-minute show. Um, yeah, I guess like, I'm going to say it now, keep your expectations low. Like, every single like EA event, I always see people like disappointed like at the very end of everything. But I'm just like, what are you expecting? Like, yeah, I like... I think we saw with Ubisoft, that was a really good way of, like, not having much, but also, you know, going in with expectations. They already said, like, which series you're not going to see, like, new installments from. Um, on the one hand, it sucks because then, you know, you don't get the surprises right. But on the other hand, like, you're not going to be disappointed. Um, so, yeah, going in, we're not going to see Jedi Fallen Order 2. We're not going to see any other new Star Wars games, sadly. Um, but, yeah, it's just what it is. What you think, Charlie? I know you already, like, predicted in the past you'd see Jedi Fallen Order 2. So, I'm guessing you're a bit yeah, bummed, I right? Yeah, I thought Jedi Fallen Order 2 would be a, a given, to be honest. Like, at least some kind of CG announcement. But I guess they just want to hold it off for closer to release. Because I think the current rumor is that Respawn are kind of aiming for, like, a late 2022, early 2023 release. So it's still a ways off. So I imagine they, they don't want to do what they did with the first one, which is just have Vince Zampella sat in the audience going, oh, yeah, it's called Jedi Fallen Order. See you next year. <laughs> like, I guess they just want to wait until they have something pretty meaty to show to people which makes sense because people already kind of know what they're getting into so i imagine we'll see I like would the, star wars, just... the star wars celebration maybe in like may next year something like that. yeah I, I imagine that could be a good play because that's what they did last time right they announced it there and then they had gameplay at ea play later in the year yeah. so i i wouldn't be surprised if they're just waiting because you know you know what you're getting into they might as well just wait till they have some cool gameplay with some of the new features and stuff to show because i mean the games are given we just need to actually see it but yeah i i think ea confirming that there's no new star wars announcements in general though is, is a good idea because there's a lot of rumors going in about new battlefront stuff or a battlefront spin-off later in the year i mean it could still happen squadrons was announced after ea play as far as i remember it got like announced in like august i think and then obviously came out in October, and that was a really quick turnaround. So if there is like a small Battlefront spinoff that's coming later in the year, which has been rumored for a while, then, you know, they might just announce it later on. Um, but yeah, overall, I think it's good that they're, they're not, you know, set, they're trying to set expectations at least a little bit. Um, I'm just going in wanting more Battlefield, maybe see Dead Space and Skate, and I'll be happy. So Yeah, probably about the same for me as well. Uh, yeah, it's always good to have expectations, though, um, just so you can set it accordingly. Anyways, some weird stuff has been going on with Sega and the Lost Judgment uh, team. So essentially what's been happening is Sega lately has been pushing more for like a PC release. So we saw that with like Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne and Persona 4 Golden. Um, both of those, you know, are essentially usually tied to either like Nintendo or PlayStation. Persona being PlayStation, Shin Megami Tensei being Nintendo. Um, yeah, and we saw those series for the very first time, I believe, come to PC in like a very long time. So yeah, Sega's lately been, you know, embracing at least the Steam marketplace. And with Lost Judgment, on the other hand, we're seeing that with Lost Judgment too, that it's coming to PC, but there's been some kind of conflict with um, the agency involved. Uh, I believe it's like a talent agency. It's like really weird. They don't want to be on Steam. And essentially what, you know, this has ended up happening is that this actually might be like the last game in the series of Lost Judgment, which is crazy because it's like really only like the second game. Uh, yeah, it's really weird, man. Uh, Charlie, I don't know if you saw this, but did you have any thoughts on this and what's going on with them? Yeah, I, I did see it. Um, I think the, the kind of like um, conclusion people came to is that because on PC you can mod stuff the agency is worried that they're gonna like use the actor's face for weird things i'm like okay sure it's very odd um i mean i i don't know if it would be the last game i feel like if it does well sega would just find a way to do the series with other people right like they would just replace yeah. the the actor or something i don't really know how deep it goes maybe they literally can't do another judgment game without this guy's face <laughs> I, I don't know, know. <laughs> um but yeah, it's a really weird one, but I also kind of get it from the agency standpoint. Like, they don't want to have, like, this guy who's probably very famous in loads of weird mods and stuff that could go viral online and then it hurts their image, I guess. I, I don't know. It's a really weird situation. I haven't heard anything like it before. Um, 
But yeah, hopefully it gets sorted out because everyone that I've spoken to that's played it really loved Judgment. So I think it'll be a shame if they don't get to do another one after Lost Judgment, if it's any good, I suppose. I was going to say, like, that's a very weird concern to have. But then I thought about the Japanese, like, marketplace and, like, like at anime and stuff. I'm like, okay, I could see where their concerns <laughs> are at. So maybe it is justified. Uh, very weird, you know, at the end of the day, I feel like people could still mod it, even if it did come to consoles, like, you know, you st- you, that still st- that stuff could still happen, but I guess, you know, on PC, it'd be a lot easier. Uh, just a very weird story. I don't think we've really seen this before. Uh, hopefully it does get worked out. Hopefully we continue to see more games in the series, or if they have to split ways, they could still continue it going forward. But yeah, wild. Anyways, pretty big announcement this week came in the form of a Bloomberg report on the fact that Netflix is going to be entering and offering, you know, games on their streaming service. So yeah, kind of weird that, you know, it's been this long now that they decided to now. Um, We've seen so many, you know, other companies in the past, like Amazon, I believe, Google. Um, Yeah, Netflix is just one of many now jumping into the pie. So yeah, essentially what the announcement here was Mike Verdu. Um, He's one of the heads at Oculus. If you watched any of like the Oculus videos, like in the past few months, I'd say he's been in a few of them. Um, You probably have recognized his face. Yeah, he's pretty much got hired on to Netflix as vice president of game development. So essentially going to be helping, you know, get games um, and kind of act as um, you know the spokesperson for trying to get games on board on the company similar to what he's doing at oculus uh, so yeah kind of like very light on details we don't know what netflix's plan is obviously with a lot of the streaming services like it's a really good idea to have exclusives of your own so my personal guess is netflix will possibly try to have some own some of their own like you know exclusive games yeah, very early in the details, obviously, because they're just hiring them now, right? But yeah, it's pretty much the big news here is that Netflix is making moves in the gaming ecosystem and trying to offer games going forward on their streaming service. So, Charlie, what would you think about all this? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting, right? Like, so far, we haven't really seen an amazing example of, like, game streaming. I, I think the only close thing we've had is really, like, xCloud um, is a good way of, like, having streaming... And you don't have to necessarily pay for the streaming aspect. It's just like an add-on to Game Pass. And they've said with this, like if they have gaming, the current plan is it wouldn't add on to the price of Netflix. But let's be real, I feel like they increase that subscription price like every six months. So it will probably go up anyway. I mean, games cost Um, way more than movies. There's no way they're going to say to that if they do that. Yeah, so... But I'm interested to see how it will go for them. I mean, they've kind of been moving in that direction anyway. They did a couple of those, like, interactive movies and shows, right? They did, like, the Black Mirror uh, special Bandersnatch, and then they did, like, that weird Minecraft um, thing on there, which I think was story mode, right? You could just play story mode on Netflix. I think so, yeah. Um, And it had all the choices and stuff, which was pretty interesting. So they've already been, like, moving in that kind of direction. Um I imagine if they do start making games of their own, it would be based on their kind of like existing IPs. Like they did a Stranger Things tie-in game a few years back. I wouldn't be surprised if they do more stuff like that, but it's exclusive to Netflix themselves. Um, Because those kind of games I never really play, but if, you know, it was included with a subscription, I'd probably be more inclined to try them out. Um, But yeah, either way, I'm excited to see what goes on with this. I'm, I'm always interested in like cloud streaming and stuff just to see how it goes um i mean obviously we haven't had too many success stories yet but you never know maybe netflix will like do something amazing and it'll work perfectly and that you'll be able to play some really cool games but who knows it's still a long ways off i think they said next year they're planning to launch it right so who knows when but um, I imagine we'll hear more about it sort of towards the end of the year, maybe beginning of next year. Yeah. I definitely think the best solutions are usually like the ones that are incorporated on like devices you already like use. Like only one I've really used is PlayStation now, just because, you know, it's like an add-on to my console, right? It's like I'm not trying to get into like a whole separate app or something like that. So the fact that Netflix would just incorporate it on their already, you know, existing service does give it potential um yeah at the end of the day like i talked about this before with you charlie like i definitely think gaming has a place in the streaming future for sure but like currently like people treat it like it's movies right like you don't see people talking about what blu-ray players are running their fucking movies on 
Um, you know, it's a very different medium. Uh, with gaming, like, yeah, there is an audience that would stream and they don't care for it, but a lot of the people care about the devices they own and care about the technical details and all that stuff. So it'll be interesting. Um, I definitely think streaming does have a future. Um, I just don't think it's as soon as everyone thinks it is. Um, but yeah, just another example of another company joining in. Eventually, someone's got to get it right, right? Like you imagine, hopefully. <laughs> we'll see. But yeah, pretty cool news there. Anyways, we got some more casting information on the Last of Us HBO show. So Jeffrey Pierce, the voice actor for Tommy in the game, he's got cast for the Last of Us HBO, but he's not playing his original character. He's playing a new character called Perry, who's like a rebel in the core, uh, in the outskirts, I believe, of the quarantine zone. Probably like one of the people you'd see like very early on in the show. Probably I imagine like hour two of the Last of Us, like you know, twenty years later, right? Um, so that's really cool. I believe they also casted Bill. I might have saw someone like that on Twitter. Um, I think they casted Bill and his partner as well. Let me just double check. Yeah, okay. So, Murray Bartlett and uh, Murray Bartlett, Con O'Neill will join HBO based on it. Yeah, okay. So, I believe Murray Bartlett's playing um, Bill's partner, and then Con O'Neill is playing Bill. I'll put an image just so you guys can see it on the video here. Um, so, yeah, all three of those were cast earlier this week, and this was broke by deadline. So, yeah, we got. The original actor for Tommy playing a new character, and then we got Bill and his partner being cast as well. So, yeah, definitely making progress on that. Um, uh, if you guys don't know, The Last of Us HBO show, I believe, has been filming for, like, the last few weeks now. Um, yeah, I believe they've been, like, filming in, like, a school. So they're definitely making a lot of progress there, um, and it's actually happening and going down. I think Neil Druckmann even, like, changed his banner the other week or so i saw something like that yeah so they yeah no Trump's current banner on twitter is like the whole entire cast of the last was hbo right now um or at least the main ones um so yeah they're making progress on that front pretty exciting stuff so charlie what'd you think about this did you see it yeah i did see the casting stuff i think it's cool that they're bringing back you know some of the voice cast not necessarily always the same character obviously mel dandridge is coming back to play uh Oh, what is the name just gone uh marlene, marlene yeah. um and having you know jeffrey come back a, and play a different character i think is really cool it makes sense because he doesn't really look like tommy it also wouldn't make any sense because pedro is obviously not of the same ethnicity so having them be brothers wouldn't really make make too much sense um so i get it from that perspective as well um, but uh, I'm really interested in the show. I think so far it's got a really great cast. It's got a really good director behind it. It's obviously got some good writers as well. So I'm overall really interested to see how the show turns out. Um, I imagine we're going to get more casting stuff almost every week at this point because when it comes to these characters, they'll probably be shooting their scenes soon, which is why they announce these castings is so that when they're filming on set, people don't take pictures and post it online before it's been announced uh it was a similar thing with uh the girl playing sarah the reason they announced that is because that day they were starting the shoot on you know the beginning of the game i guess uh so the very first scene so obviously they didn't want people taking pictures and then leaking out who's playing sarah uh so i imagine it's a similar thing here it's because they're all going to show up pretty early on in the show and they'll be filming their scenes soon so they're they're getting ready to go on set and stuff um yeah, overall, I'm I'm really excited. Um, I just can't wait to see some footage of it. To be honest with you, right. uh, I'm a lot more excited about this than I've ever been about the Uncharted. Oh movie, yeah, so. definitely. It just it works a lot more. Um, like yeah, like we you still have the same issues. Obviously, like you know, you're not gonna hear the same voices and the faces are gonna be different. Um, but just the fact that talent involved is you know Neil Druckmann's gonna be on board. We got the guy from Chernobyl. Just a lot of people that are passionate about the game, right? And then obviously HBO, so you know the quality is going to be good. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of things going for this, and I'm looking forward to seeing footage as well. Yeah, I hope we get to see something soon, um, but at the same time, I don't want to see something too early. So yeah, we'll see. Uh, I think it's what planned for next year, I know, right? So it's cool. yeah, I think it's next fall the the aiming release because the they're basically booked up all the actors until like next summer in case they have to do reshoots so gotcha. i imagine we see some footage like end of the year early next year but typically with shows they don't show off trailers too soon yeah like after they've been filming when it comes to new stuff so yeah so i, I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see anything until next year easily um but yeah, yeah nonetheless very excited about this and yeah i can't wait to watch it it's very cool on that front anyways 
Naji Jeter. So essentially, I think Charlie talked about this in the past when we were doing our E3 predictions. Naji Jeter, the voice and um, yeah, voice of Miles Morales on um, the Spider-Man games from Insomniac. Uh, a few weeks ago, he posted, you know, mocap, um, him in a mocap suit, right? And that kind of got us, you know, predicting that they're going to announce something at E3. Essentially, same thing kind of happened here again. Uh, he had like a story on Instagram. Essentially, it was him in his mocap suit. And then he took it down probably because either like Insomniac or Sony saw it and they wanted him to delete it, right? Um, so, yeah, just more confirmation that... Most likely, they've already started work on Spider-Man 2, and they're kind of going into full production, I imagine. Especially since they just finished Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. I imagine that's what their, like, big team's probably moving over towards. Um, yeah, very exciting stuff there. So, yeah. Do you have anything you wanted to add before we move on? Yeah, I mean, it kind of made sense. Like, you were touching on, like, he tweeted out a picture, or not tweeted, he put on his Instagram, like, a few, I want to say it was a month or two ago now, like just uh, the Mars logo, mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah, so right. people kind of assumed that meant, oh, he's probably back in the studio doing Spider-Man stuff. And then this is he put up a story of him in a mocap suit. So, and you know, it could well be that he's doing something else, but I would imagine this is Spider-Man. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, obviously, he was teasing it before, and then Ratchet is just you know finished being made and it's actually released now so they're all kind of done with that now though i'm sure they'll have a few people doing patches and stuff but the majority of the team is going to be in full production on the next thing now which like i said is most likely spider-man 2 makes a lot of sense so yeah i'm i'm excited for it i think it's cool that we kind of basically know at this point that is the next thing it's just how long before we see it now i guess yeah exactly uh knowing insomniac they'll surprise us right <laughs> they they work very fast I've always yeah. thought end of 2022 makes sense, but it all depends yeah. on how ambitious the sequel is, right? Like, if it's anything like Horizon, where, like, it it looks really similar, um, I could see it being next year in the 2022 time frame. Um, but if it's ambitious, then I wouldn't be surprised if it's as far out as 2023 or later. Um, I hope it's ambitious, just because God of War and Horizon I am excited for, but I know it's going to be more of the same. Um, and especially since they're going to be on PS4, I know that technically it'll still be impressive, but nothing that's going to be like mind blowing. That's never been like really done before. Uh, so yeah, who knows? Do you think it will come to PS4 now that they're like finally going into full production? Um, now? See, I'm kind of mixed on it. Cause I want to say no, because Ratchet wasn't, but Ratchet was so like that, like you physically couldn't do it. Yeah. on ps4 but like spider-man's such a big ip for them and you know they're obviously putting horizon and god of war on that and gran turismo it makes me think that maybe it will be it just depends how much work they've done on it before they go into full production i think um but it, it may well be that they're planning it for ps5 and they get closer to announcing it and they go hey we could probably port this to ps4 if we wanted to maybe just dumb it down a little bit um and I imagine it will be very much based on what Sony want to do and whether they decide, hey, we've sold enough PS5s at this point that we're not going to lose out on a ton of money by just putting it on next gen. Um, so I, I imagine it will be a God of War situation where they're not really sure until later on, just seeing how sales go and stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I could see it going either way at this point. I think it's smart for them to make it next gen exclusive just because... I'm sure there's a lot of people that own PS4s that mainly bought it for Spider-Man. There's like a, you know, Marvel crowd out there, right? We all know it exists. Um, that are like super diehard fans of that. And I imagine a lot of them just stuck with their PS4s because of Miles. Like they didn't really, they weren't really forced to, right? I'm sure a lot of them did upgrade because you did get Spider-Man remastered and then you also got a better version of Miles Morales, right? But I'm sure a lot of them did stick with the PS4. And I think it makes sense to have a conversion at some point, right? Like, yeah, you can still make, um, uh, like a shit ton of money by just releasing these on the install base. That's well over a hundred million right now, but at a certain point you got to build up the current one. Right. And yeah, they're not doing that with God of War and horizon, but they got to do that eventually with some big name IP. I still think, you know, knowing Sony and knowing how well it did sell on PS4, that's still up in the air. But I think that there's probably a good chance if it is 2023 that they will make it exclusive. But who knows, man? Only time will tell. But yeah, it'll be interesting. Uh, yeah. Hopefully it does come next gen only. But we'll see. 
Anyways, we'll move on to our last story, which is easily probably the most exciting one. Um, Charlie actually talked about this a few weeks back, and it was one of his E3 predictions. We talked a bit about like the rumored Steam Pal that was, I believe, what was it, like a patent or something like that? Uh, yeah, it showed up on like the Steam database, basically, as like an update for just Steam compatibility. Yeah, so we talked about that a few weeks ago, and yeah, we got the official announcement this week, actually. So yeah, it's going to be called the Steam Deck, and essentially what it is is essentially what Charlie said a few weeks ago. It's going to be a handheld PC device. Um, so yeah, it's essentially going to be running Steam OS, right? It's like pretty much a full-on PC, so if you wanted to, you could get things like you know Windows installed and other things like that. Um, yeah, so it's going to be a handheld PC device where you could play all your Steam library on the go. Um, there's going to be three models currently, 399 for a 64 gigabyte base version. If you upgrade to a 519, you do get 256 gigabytes. And then I believe the last one is going to be 649, and that comes with 516 gigabytes of storage as well as like an anti like an anti glare screen. So if you're playing out in the sun. So mainly the differences in price only come down to the storage and the speed of that storage. Really, that's all it is. Um, you know, the performance, I believe all the specs are out there for you to see. It's like two terabytes. So it's like largely around the performance of the PS4. Um, but it is going to be targeting 720p on a handheld, right? So, you know, you're going to be seeing higher frame rates because they are targeting a lower, um, you know, you know, resolution. So very, very cool announcement there. Um, yeah, I've, I guess I'll give my thoughts on it real quickly. Um, I definitely really like how it looks like I definitely thought it was really odd at first. Um, you'll see the screen, um, online and like the analogs are like very high up in the air and the buttons are in the very corner of the device and it looks really odd, but then you see videos of people playing it. Um, and it does look pretty cool. Um, I think the biggest draw for me is the fact that if I do buy this thing, I already have like a shit ton of games to play on it, right? It's not one of those things where I'm buying a new handheld and I got to factor in the price of games and stuff like that. Like literally my whole entire Steam library would be available pretty much immediately, um, which is very enticing. Um, and then, yeah, just the fact that, you know, the possibility of playing these things, you know, on the go is really, really cool. I ended up did putting a deposit because it did open up reservations as of this morning. It's like five dollars to reserve yours. Um, I did end up putting one down. I'm not sure if I'll keep it. Pretty much just doing it just in case, right? We'll see how you know financially I'm at in December time when the orders start coming out. But so far I'm kind of like on the fence, leaning towards possibly picking one up. But we'll see. Um, but Charlie, I know you're like a huge Valve fan. So do you want to go over everything that you've been thinking about in terms of even like the Citadel thing that you told me as well? You know, go ahead. Yeah, so, I mean, I was always interested in the thing. I mean, since the r rumor started, like, a few weeks, months back, like, it did sound really intriguing. Uh, like, Brandon, I did put down a deposit. What what one did you put I got the 516. The 512 gig, yeah, same five, here. Yeah, five, um, yeah. It was, more, like, for me, I when I was looking at them, it was like, well, 64 gig it's probably not going to be enough to really get much. Sure, you could put like some indie games on there, but you're not going to be able to store too much. Um, whereas when you go to like the 256 and 512, you get a much better SSD as well because it's like NVMe, so it's going to be much quicker. Um, and then it's only what like a hundred pounds, like one hundred and twenty dollars more to get the the double the storage, and you get like a better screen and a different carry case, and you get an exclusive Steam community profile. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know you have to pay the extra money for that that's what everyone really wants right um but no overall the hardware sounds really promising it's running on like the latest like zen 2 amd architecture so the same chips you're getting in the latest ryzen processors as well as ps5 and series x it is running a much lower end chip so like brandon said it's basically the equivalent power of like a ps4 or xbox one but because it's running at 720p you're going to get much better performance on a lot of the the new generation games than you would on those consoles um most of the library is going to work out of the box it is running steam os so it's not windows it's more linux um but it's using this software called uh, proton which basically is like wine if you've ever heard of wine software which is uh, what they use on like Linux and Mac to actually get Windows programs to work. So out of the box, the vast majority of your games are going to work. I think they've said right now the only ones that don't really work are th multiplayer things like Apex and Siege and stuff like that, just because the anti-cheat software doesn't seem to work. But they said they're, they're working on that right now, so hopefully by launch all that stuff will be playable and you can play those games on the go, which will be amazing. Um, 
And yeah, overall, the hardware just sounds really promising. Being able to just use it as a PC, I think, is crazy. IGN showed some footage of them just plugged into a basic USB dock. They are doing like an official one, but you can use any USB-C hub and just plug an HDMI in and use it as a desktop PC. Um, and they were saying like the latency on it is really like basically non-existent. So if they didn't see the the actual dock there with the Steam Deck, they would have thought they were just playing on a desktop, which I think is crazy. Um, and just the, the compatibility it's going to have with everything, I think, is awesome. Um, it just seems like a really cool idea and i think valve have done a great job of hitting a pretty decent price point with the the tech i think it, a lot of the other alternatives to this like the gpd win and some of the other devices that will be coming out i think razor are prototyping a thing are probably going to be a lot more money than this just because valve are able to hit a much lower price point without losing too much money just because they have you know endless amounts of money to dive into this stuff to make things at a, a decent cost um so yeah, I'm probably going to end up fulfilling my order. It depends. I mean, we've got plenty of time to decide. I think December's when they're going to start shipping. My one on Steam says that it's expected Q1 2022. So I want to say that's December, um, but I'm not entirely sure off the top of my head. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to see more about it. It looks really promising. Um, I think it's a really cool piece of hardware and just seeing Valve kind of jump into that space again is is cool and they seem to be in it for the long run um when brandon was speaking about the citadel stuff i I guess i'll briefly mention that uh like tyler mcvicker was basically he's going to be talking about it a lot more soon but he was basically saying that if the index was the big showpiece for half-life alex the steam deck is probably going to be the big piece of tech they show off their next game on which is citadel which is a cross-platform game between pc and vr so I imagine the idea is you'll be able to play locally with people who are in VR whilst you're on a Steam Deck, which I think is really cool. Um, and it makes a lot of sense. That game's meant to get announced within the next year or so, Tyler reckons. So I imagine that around the time that the Steam Deck shipping is when we'll hear about the next game. Kind of similar to what happened with Alex. Um, but yeah, overall, I'm, I'm really excited um, and can't wait to see more to be honest yeah there's like a few other things i want to talk about like the touchpad that looks pretty cool like the fact that you'd be able mm. to like kind of mimic you know the pc space there um i also think like it's really like cool to think about like so many games to be able to play on the go now like with the switch you kind of have to hope that you know devs go for the effort of porting it over right but with this like you could just natively play like gta 5 and like red dead redemption 2 if you wanted to granted it would probably not be the best you know performance but it's still going to be targeting 720p so i imagine you'd still be able to you know play decently well on it um and then you know the fact that it is like a full-on pc right like you could put in pretty much anything you wanted to like accessory wise and even emulation wise so you know, I've never really dabbled with like handheld emulation just because I feel like that'd be really weird to do that on like a desktop, but like maybe I will now, like possibly go into some of the older handhelds, right? Um, really, really cool potential there. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking about sticking with my, you know, order and fulfilling it just because, yeah, there's just so much possibility. There are still some other concerns, the fact that, you know, two to eight hour battery life, right? Um, and then some other issues as well, like storage. It's just going to be very expensive if you want 512. Um, but yeah, it's very exciting. Uh, it's crazy to see how this little rumor that we saw ended up, you know, being, you know, crazy and like a big announcement. So really, really, really cool to see. And yeah, hopefully it comes out. It's good. And hopefully as well, like they can satisfy the orders, right? Like we've seen with the next gen consoles that ultimately like, with the chip shortage and like the scalper marketplace, like now more than ever, you know, you see people talking about how pissed off they are about like the systems that they have online. And so far it seems to be kind of fine. It seems like, you know, the main issues they had this morning were mainly towards like the bandwidth of their store, right? Like so many people just ask, accessing steam kind of similar to what you see on the steam summer sale where it's just, you know, slowing down, but yeah, hopefully when December rolls around, a lot of people will be able to pick it up if they want to. And it's really, like, really interesting. Like, this is, like, the first ever kind of, like, handheld PC we've seen, really. Like, there's been some in the past based on, like, people that wanted to make it, right? Maybe on, like, Kickstarter or something. But nothing from, like, a big player like this. So it could be the start of, like, a whole, you know, line of products that we see now. 
um yeah i just think it's awesome the fact that you buy this thing and you have like your existing library already like syncing up with cloud sync and all that like it's such a cool idea man and hopefully it just comes out and it like fulfills on all that so yeah i'm looking forward to that it's really really cool to see that valve's doing that yeah anyways that's, i think uh yeah. I was going to say, yeah, I, th I think an another really cool thing is like uh, people like Tim Sweeney have been pretty open about how cool the device is. Obviously, he's a, a big person at Epic. Um, so whether we get like native support for that stuff would be really cool to see because you'll be able to play stuff like games that are on Epic and Battle.net and things, but you would have to basically install Windows instead of having SteamOS on there. But if they end up adding like Linux support to Epic Game Store, that would then mean you'd be able to install that launcher as well um so i think tim being really excited about it is kind of promising that maybe epic will do something with the device you know obviously there is that kind of bad blood between them and valve but i would really love to be able to play those games and even install something as dumb as like fortnite on there i think would be really cool um so i i don't know like overall the compatibility and like potential of it is crazy as well with stuff like obviously dlss is an nvidia thing but amd have their own version of that that they're working on so potentially you'd be able to use dlss types things on this and get much better frame rates potentially you have like super sampling so you get better resolutions on the same device at the same performance which i think is crazy as well um but yeah overall it's got a ton of potential so it's very exciting yeah definitely definitely really cool to see and yeah anyways that's about it for this week's episode uh yeah good like the episode and yeah hopefully next week as i said we'll be able to have justin on it's been a few episodes since we last had him on um and then we'll get his thoughts on maybe some of the bigger topics that we talked about over the weeks like i still don't think we've talked to him about the ghost director's cut yet possibly uh so yeah, yeah. we'll definitely have to catch up with him and see what he's been playing as well um so yeah look forward to that but yeah, besides that, just, you know, thank you for sticking through the whole entire episode. Appreciate it. We'll see you next week for episode 35. Take care. See you later.